All right, so we have three different substrates here right now, and we'll talk about a fourth that I use for my mushrooms. And this is the soy hole over here, and it's basically a supplement to hardwood right here. I and mean, you basically combine the two to make a pop popular mixture called uh, the master's mix. And uh, it's 50-50 of both. I like to go more 40-60, 60 hardwood, 40 soy hull, but anything close to that is good. And it just gives you an amazing yield for things like lion's mane and oyster mushrooms and various other species, but uh, those two in particular. And then over here we have the wheat bran. It's actually mids, I think. I don't know if that's a smaller, more like granule kind of chunk, but got this really dusty, dusty bits of bran there, and that's used for shiitake. So it's uh, mainly 20, 15% of this, and then the rest hardwood to formulate a 10 pound block, and that's for shiitake. Maitake, you can also use a little bit of soy hull, and then hardwood, 25 to 70% of this hardwood here uh, to make those blocks. So now that we know a little of what substrates are used for what mushrooms, now I'm gonna get into where we can source them. Hardwood pellets can be sourced from many different places. An Agway or Walmart and places like Home Depot can have wood pellets. So they're readily available, especially during the winter times. I use a uh, brand called Barefoot. It seems to work really good. There's a lot of other brands out there. The thing that I like to tell people is make sure it's a hardwood, not a softwood. And there's some softwood and hardwood blends. And that's basically just means that the Pellets come from either a mixture of hardwood trees or softwood trees, so sappy trees. And if you get that sappiness in your bags, uh, it's just not ideal. Uh, you can grow mushrooms off it, but uh, slower growth and it's just a sticky situation. It's, it, it's not good, not good. Soy hulls. Soy hulls are extremely important for mushroom growing, as we've mentioned. They can help you grow a lot of different species uh, with much bigger yields. This can be a difficult one to source. Um, I'm lucky I'm in a state where they are pretty available. You can get them almost any feed store. The only problem is, is pelletized ones. I like the pelletized ones. They're easier to handle and scoop. The dust, you know, gets all in your face if you get the dust. There's a lot of uh, um, just loose uh, crunched up soy hull that you can buy. It's really cheap if you want to go that route. It's just, for me, it doesn't work very well. It's it's messy and it doesn't work in my bagging system that I have. There's a video to that above. Um, but yeah, so I just I like the pelletized form. Yes, yeah, it's a little more expensive, but works for me. You can contact any local feed mills. They usually have it. And then from there, you can see if it's even possible they can pelletize it. The organic versus non-organic. So that's one thing too. I have organic soy hull. Works good for me. I've heard uh, you want to be careful of potential um, pesticides you know or fungicides that are sprayed on these these guys i don't know if the heat in the pelletizing process will get rid of that or, or break down the chemical structure and make it so you don't have to worry about it but i've used the dust i've used other un uh, organic pellets before i've had luck with all of them i would test on a small scale and then i would see what happens obviously if you want to go organic you're going to need organic soy hulls so that's something you can source Mushroom media, that's where I plan on getting my soy hulls in the future. You can get them in bulk shipped. They're up in uh, Michigan, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But uh, it's a good place for all sorts of different supplies and you can have it shipped to you. So if you're a bigger farmer, you can get it all shipped down and it might be worth your while. But if you're starting out, I would source locally. Wood pellets, agway, soy hulls. I look around, call people, get crazy. And on to our last guy here. Wheat bran. Wheat bran is important for shiitake cultivation, as I've said, and you can find this anywhere, really. Contact mills. I mean, I bought some from um, Baker's something online. A lot of bakeries, if you do bulk, you can get like a whole big bag of them for 50 bucks, 60 pound bag, uh, and you can get it shipped right to you. And it's, just, it's not that much. It's, it's a light one. It's a light, but um, works great. Works great for shiitakes. You can get the wheat brands, the wheat mids. I think it's all the same. It is not something that's crazy hard to find. And then obviously if organic is something you want for the for the for your shiitakes, you're gonna have to figure that out. I'm not very helpful with that yet. As uh, in the future, I would like to be all organic. There's a couple other things I need to work out, such as grain. So speaking of grain, there's a variety of different grains you can use out there. I stick with rye. I used to use millet. 
uh, but rye is really cheap and it works well. And that's a whole other process of hydrating and, and sterilizing all that grain and stuff like that. But in order to get grain, I mean, you can get it any ag way, any, any feed store really. Uh, they'll have all sorts of grains you can use and you can potentially even request. So go out there and, and look for some uh, grains that you'd like. I mean, there's millet, oats, uh, rye, you can use uh, the bird seed. Yeah, there's a lot of different grains you can use. So best of luck to all of you out there sourcing your supplies. There's lots of good videos on it, but uh, hopefully this helps someone out and um, yeah.